Oh, <laughs> hello YouTube. Today on The Naughty Librarian, I am doing a get ready with me booktube real talk. So I had seen like the booktube real talk video go around a little bit ago and I was like, okay, like let's get into it. Like I would love to do that. <laughs> and I figured, hey, I'll make it into a get ready with me because I feel like let's spill all of the tea, including me makeup -less, So let's do this. I know a lot of like beauty bloggers use primer. I do not have primer. <laughs> um, I kind of want to try it, but like I don't. I am a real big stickler for sunblock though. So I mentioned this before my other get ready with me video, kiss my face sunblock. It is like my all time favorite sunblock because you will not get burned wearing it. Legit. Like it was weird because I know when I put it on shittily on my shoulders, like I only get burned in like weird little tiny sections that I've missed <laughs> when I like sloppily rub it in. So I know it works. So there's that. Originally, I saw this on Stephanie's channel. That's Stephanie's Romance Book Talk. I'll put a link to the video in the blurb down below so you can check that out. And she spilled some tea. Like I was intrigued. I want to get into this. Question one. What's something nobody told you about booktube before you started your channel? That is a good question. Uh, well, first of all, makeup wise, I just got this new foundation and it's like legit the best foundation I've ever tried. And it's just Maybelline. It's the Maybelline Superstay foundation and it's in 115 Ivory. And like, it's literally the best foundation. <laughs> I don't know why it's so good. I usually take like one pump. Anyway, so what's something no one told me about booktube before I started? Um, no one really told me that I would make as many friends as I did. Uh, I just kind of did it because I wanted a creative outlet and I just thought it'd be fun. I didn't really like go into it with the like expectation of anything. I just kind of something I felt was fun and wanted to do. So I did it. And then um, throughout the course of watching other people's channels, I just kind of met a lot of really cool people and we would start talking and then like, I made all these super cool friends like all over the country. Like I'd only live like physically by one person I met on booktube, which is Leanna from Leanna's library. We live fairly close to each other. By fairly, I mean like, like 30 miles apart <laughs> so we're not that close but like we're close enough that like we could hang out if we wanted to but other than that like everyone else is like all over the country and sometimes the world like I've had people I've talked to who live like in Scotland like Jean from Jean Pookish Thoughts she's in Scotland and like I thought it was really cool that I was able to connect with all of these people all over the world just be t for like our love of books and it was really cool and I didn't I honestly didn't expect to make as many like cool friends as I did in the booktube community so that was something no one told me about that it is a community and you genuinely make a lot of friends doing it and that is super cool so number two is what is your opinion on typical booktube videos that's like wrap-ups TBRs uh, hauls, etc. All of those type of videos. I don't know. I don't really have like a, an opinion about whether or not I think they're good or bad per se. Uh, I like filming them. I think the easiest thing to film are book hauls because it's literally like this is a book and this is another book. I'm excited. <laughs> and they're just easy to film. When I, something I'm doing that's much more critical like a wrap-up like I have to like think about what did I think about this book and then try to concise like make it concise to fit into one or two minutes which is kind of hard especially I read some really long ass books so it's like I'm condensing 600 pages of a book into two minutes like it's kind of hard so those ones I have to like write and think about and yeah so I don't know also I can never tell what videos are going to be popular like, I, sometimes I put like a lot of effort into things and then like no one watches it. <laughs> and I'm like, I tried really hard. And then some videos like I don't try very hard, like with my book hauls. I have a lot of fun doing them and I think that's the appeal is that they're fun because I'm having fun. 
but it's just like, you know, I don't put a lot of effort into those, but they do, usually those do pretty well. I will say that, but then I do some like weird, you know, out of the box video and those usually don't go over as well. So I'm not really sure. Like this video might not do so well. Who knows? Cause I did one other get ready with me and I don't think people wanted to get ready with me. <laughs> Moving on, number three, what is an assumption you had about booktube before you joined and was it proven incorrect or correct? I think that's how the question went. Um, ooh, an assumption I thought about booktube, proven incorrect or correct. Huh. Oh, okay, I got one. Um, before I started my channel, I thought like I was gonna be the old lady of booktube. <laughs> like, I thought a lot of like the really like big name booktubers were very young because they certainly, um, they seem to cater to a younger audience, just their whole vibe. And I was like, Ugh. like, I cater to grown ass adults. Like I say fuck a lot. <laughs> so, I mean, that's not really like my, you know, space. I'm not in that zone. And I thought like I was gonna be like way older than everyone else. Not that I'm like an old person, but you know what I mean. And then I found out a lot of the really big name booktubers are about my age. They're like within a year or two. So I'm really not that old to be on booktube. And also I found that a lot of the viewers aren't that young. I would say I don't really have very many, if very many that I can think of even, like under 18 viewers. I'm sure there are some, but I don't think necessarily my content is for kids. But um, I think the vast majority of my viewers are people in their 20s and up. So yeah, so I thought like the booktube community was gonna just be a much younger atmosphere than it actually is. I think for the most part, it's people in their uh, early 20s or early 30s. I think those two are the biggest booktube groups I've found. So yeah, it was interesting. Mm -hmm. Number four, uh, what is something you've done that has actually helped you grow your audience? I don't know. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know. <laughs> what have I done to grow my audience? Um, I think I just bring it up more in conversations. It's like, oh yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Like I'll just bring it up casually. So they go, oh, what's your channel? I'm like, well, I'm the naughty librarian. <laughs> you know, then the conversation usually stops because I've said something very weird. But, you know, like, I feel like that's kind of my aesthetic in life is naughty librarian, so I might as well just embrace it. Okay, one more thing that I've done that's, like, silly. <laughs> um, I need to get new business cards, but I originally had business cards. And every time I'd go to, like, a bookstore, uh, if they were cool with it, like, I'd leave, like, a little stack of cards, like, at the counter or something, so people could, like, take one when they leave, because people usually just take doodads. Or if they weren't so cool, I would sneak around their store and stick them in books I like. <laughs> so like I would just find this book on a shelf. I'm like, oh, um, uh, what's a book I like? Okay, Six of Crows. I'd walk around the store and I find Six of Crows and I put my business card in it. So the next person who buys that copy will find one of my cards. So he's like, hey, we both like the same book. And that sounds stupid, but I have had people like message me and say, hey, I found your business card in this book I bought. <laughs> so it does work. And like, I didn't just do that locally. Like I did that every time I went on vacation, I'd find bookstores and like put them in books. So like in many different cities around the country, <laughs> there are my business cards and books. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Are you one of the people who found one? Because I've had a, like a couple at least. I think, I think it was like two or three messages at least of someone saying like, hey, I found your book, your thing inside this book. And yeah, so I, maybe. I mean, at least I got three people <laughs> that way. Um, I do realize it's a weird thing to do, though. And I don't really do it anymore, but part of me thinks, like, I'll totally still do it. <laughs> I don't know. I should get some more. I should get some more. Because there's some bookstores, too, who just let you leave, like, a stack. And usually those go really fast, surprisingly. 
Number five, what is a common mistake you see new booktubers making or one that you made yourself? I think one is uh, not posting regularly. I see a lot of people do that. They post every once in a while and like no one's gonna know to go watch your videos if you don't have like a set time for people to find your videos. Like that's how TV works, you know, like your favorite shows on the same time, the same night every week. That's how you know where to find it. If you don't do that, then no one's gonna know when your videos come. Like no one's gonna watch them. A mistake I think I made, I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard to like put into words necessarily, but it was more that um, I was trying too hard, I think is the best way to describe it. Um, hold on, hold on. I gotta finish my eyebrow first because I can't like talk and do on my eyebrow. <laughs> like it's, it's too much for my brain. First brow's done, I feel a little better now. <laughs> um, by that I mean like even, I went back and watched like my original videos the other day and they were slightly cringy, but like not so bad because I feel like I've kept my same sense of humor the like entire time I've been making videos, but I do feel like there's a different vibe now. I don't know, I felt maybe in the beginning, I didn't really know exactly how my channel should look and what I should talk about. And I don't know, I just felt like I wasn't necessarily my complete self. I was a bit more, um, this is me performing and I'm doing a video right now. So I was a bit less, I don't know, ingenuous. It was disingenuous, I guess. Well, disingenuous is a hard word. I wouldn't say they were disingenuous because they still had like my same sense of humor. It's just I wasn't as comfortable, I think, behind like in front of the camera. I, yeah, I think that's it. It's just a level of comfort because now I feel like my videos are much more conversational. It's just like, yes, I do realize I'm staring at a camera right now and not a person, <laughs> but I feel like I still talk to my camera as it's as if it is a person. So I think that does help the video seem much more fluid and like comfortable because now it's just a conversation rather than me trying to perform something. It makes it more intimate. Okay. <laughs> I always do this and I realize it makes me look like a weirdo but I need to see if they're even and I think the best way to do it is just do this because you see both at the same time faster and you can kind of tell which one needs like a little extra work to make them like as close to sisters as possible. Because if they're cousins, like everyone can tell when <laughs> you have two different eyebrows. I'd like them to look somewhat similar. I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. Number six, what are your thoughts on working with publishers and sponsorships? Um, I don't know, I've never really been sponsored by anything, but the other side, I'm not opposed to it necessarily. I have had a few publishers like send me books, which is really nice of them, and then like in my last a couple videos ago, like Lisa Doty, she's a romance novel author. She sent me a whole bunch of books and that was super nice of her. And then I have like people who come out of the woodwork or like, can I get you my book? And they feel like real pushy. So like I've, I have like a way of like weeding out the people that I think are gonna be insane <laughs> to the people that I think aren't insane, especially if it's coming from an actual, actual like publisher house or a publicist, like their emails look different. You could also Google their email and it shows like where it comes from. So if it looks like a legit publisher or publicist, I feel less nervous about it. Um, with indies though, like I completely get it. You're an indie author, you want people to read your book, you want people to review it because that's how people are gonna find out about your book to buy it. The thing is, <laughs> I don't have time to read everyone's book. So I just straight up to say that to people now, I'm like, okay, well, what do you expect me to do? Like, I say it nicer than that, but I'm just like, what do you, what are you expecting out of this if you send me this book? Do you want me to do like an Instagram post? Do you want me to bring it up in a book haul? Are you looking to me for, do a whole review video? Like, what do you want me to do? Cause I feel like I need to know that going in because like, I don't want to say like, sure, send me all these books. And then everyone gets mad at me because I didn't hold up my end of the bargain. So I want to know what my side of the bargain is going in. Like, that's what I need to know. And I'll, I'll just tell people, I'm like, I can do this and this, but if you want me to read it right away, like you need to send it with enough time 
that I can read it. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. You can't send it to me a week before I have to review it. <laughs> That's asking a lot. If you send it to me like a month before I need to review it, I can get it done in a month because then I don't have to rearrange my whole schedule to accommodate your fucking book, which is going to predispose me to not liking your book. <laughs> So I just tell them like time frames and like, hey, what do you want me to do? And most of the time they're just like, oh, just talk about it. That's fine. If you can review it too, that's cool. But like, we just wanted it brought up and I'm like, yeah, I can bring up books. I do that all the time. I don't mind. Like, I'm also not going to lie. I'm not going to say like, oh, this book's amazing. Go out and buy it right now. If I haven't read the book, like, I'm not going to say that. Like, I'll be as nice as possible because it is cool. They sent me a book, but I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to like, give them false expectations of what they're getting. But as far as sponsorships go, I mean, if people want to pay me <laughs> to do this, awesome. I would love that. Because <laughs> um, I love to read anyway, and then if I trick people into paying me to do it, that's kind of the dream, <laughs> really. So yeah, I'm not opposed to it. Someone told me a while ago I should post um, like my Amazon wish list. And I felt weird doing it, so like my Amazon wish list is posted down below, but I just never bring it up. <laughs> just like, okay, I put it in the list of things and list the links that are on all my videos, but I don't like bringing it up. This is the first time I've ever brought it up. But someone said like, no, you should do it. Like people like want you to read certain things and they want to send it to you because they like, like your videos. And I'm like, I don't know if they like me that much. So I feel weird about it. I don't know. Anyway, sponsorships, if money can be made doing something I love, I don't see why I shouldn't get it. I can never tell if my eyeliner is even. <laughs> I always hope it is because I've done it for so many years, like I'm pretty good at getting it even, but I always think it's not even. And then I like, I mess around with it for so much longer than I need to. It's bananas. I also am not capable of speaking while doing it. That's why I've just done this off camera. <laughs> But um, just believe me that I'm struggling with having this match. Moving on, number seven. Do you think BookTube is dying? Definitely not. I mean, books have been around for quite a while. I don't think they're going anywhere. <laughs> and neither are people talking about them. Because books are always going to be around. I mean, 90% of movies out there are based on books. Books are kind of a big deal still. Also, didn't Michelle Obama, like, just do, like, a video with a bunch of booktubers? Like, Michelle Obama knows what booktube is. Like, I don't think it's going anywhere. We're good. Uh, <laughs> maybe I'll leave this in because I know I'm making weird mascara faces. <laughs> like, no one makes a cute face when they do mascara because it's, like, all up in your eye. <laughs> and number eight is tag some friends. Um... Funny story, I, did, I didn't write down anybody I wanted to tag. <laughs> Top of my head, I'm going to pick, um, oh, you know what, I picked Jessica from the Tiny Tea Set. She's actually still new to BookTube and she's a really cool friend of mine and like if you like my acerbic humor, you're totally gonna love Jess. I'll leave a link to her channel. Either there's gonna be a, t a little thingy here or down below. There'll be there'll be a way to find it. Um, I mentioned Leanna from Leanna's Library in this, so I'll tag her. And then uh, let's go international because I've made some international friends. So uh, Tabby from Keeping Tads because she's in Canada, and then uh, Jean from Jean Bookish Slash because I mentioned her in this video too, and she's in I think Scotland. It could just be England, but it's definitely the UK. <laughs> I might have got this country wrong and I felt bad, but like I held it back till right now. I gotta stop talking for a second so I can do my lipstick. Because otherwise it's just gonna be like everywhere. All right, face is done, looking cute. Seriously though, like this foundation is stunning. Um, I, I'm like shocked that it's just Maybelline, but it's like legit the best foundation. Like my skin looks so creamy. I love it. I love it so much quick hair fluff so I don't look like a ragamuffin <laughs> but um, I kind of always do because I don't know how to do my hair I just let it like I wash it and then I brush it and then I just let it do what it wants <laughs> like that's the extent of my hair care um, I should really learn how to do something I just like kind of like my natural texture so luckily like they worked out for me anyway 
Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about BookTube? Let's get real. What are your thoughts? Let me know down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye! Camera's too far away for me to touch. Ha, 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 ha.